in a year, and we are in the last month, December. We are, I think, exactly halfway through the month. And I think last week or the week before, I was listening to Premier Radio, and someone said, wow, the year is ended. And most of the things I plan to do, I have not done it. And so I have failed at the things that I wanted to do. So last night I was battling with the first message and I was just praying and God just said, failure. And to be honest, I was like, are you saying I have failed? <laughs> and he said, no, I want you to talk about failure. Amen. So this morning we are going to talk about failure as a child of God, or what is failure, or do we fail? Amen? Like I said, at the beginning of the year, a lot of us put pen to paper, dotted some things down that we want to achieve by the end of this year. And for some of us, we have achieved some of them. For some of the things we have achieved. For some, we are still working on. And for some, we tackled it, but it didn't work out the way we wanted it to go. Amen? And most of the time, we classify that as failure, as I have failed to do something. Amen? But one of the things that I always say to my children is that you never really fail unless you die. Amen? Especially in the era that we are in. Even to the point in Africa right now, even if you are 80, 90, if you want to, you can still attend school and learn something new. Amen? There are stories in the world and in the book of people who reach a certain age and started something and became successful at it. But all their life, everything that they have done did not go according to how they plan it. Beloved, as long as you are not dead, you have not failed. Amen? Because you can always go back to it and look at it and plan again. both in the world and in the Bible, and we will start with the Bible, there are people in the Bible that did not go right for them at the first attempt. Those in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Those who stood by Jesus Christ and those who came later on. To us right now, When we read the book, let's start from the Old Testament. Second Samuel, chapter 11. I believe most of you know this story. It's the story of David and Bathsheba. Now, interestingly, I've never actually looked at it in this way. But as I was reading it, this is what I saw. It says, verse chapter 11 says, It happened in the spring of the year at the time when the kings go out to battle. Amen? When the kings go out to battle. David sent Joab and his servant with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbath. But David remained in Jerusalem. So David did not go with them. He did not go to battle when he was meant to go. First thing, failure is, 
let's say you plan to do something, a business. You plan and don't plan it properly, you are bound to fail. So in order to fail, you are meant to do something, but you don't do. And in not doing, it leads you to failure. Amen? David was meant to go to battle with them. But because he did not go, something else happened. Because imagine this. If David had gone to battle as he usually do, we would not have this story. Amen? The reason why I'm pointing this out is I'm going ahead of myself. But if we do, I said, when you fail, you can go back, look at it, and do the proper way. Which means if at the beginning we do it the right way, we are bound to succeed. Amen? You are bound to succeed. But David did not go to battle. And because he did not go to battle, it happened that one evening he was walking on the king's roof and he saw a woman. Amen? And the story goes on to say that David then went into her and committed adultery. And not only did he commit adultery, but then now he became a murderer because he now went as far as killing Bathsheba's husband. This is King David, the king of Israel, who later in the Bible, God says, this is a man after my own heart. But David from the beginning failed. Amen? David failed. But yet, this is a man that God says is a man after my own heart. That's one. If we come to the New Testament, Peter, we all know Peter as the rock of the church. Amen? We know Peter as the leader of the church or the, the disciples or the apostles. Amen? But Peter also failed. Amen? Amen? But with Peter's failure, it was a bit different from King David. If we read Luke 22, Luke 22, 54 to 62. Are we there? Have, having arrested him, they led him away and brought him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter stood among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man also, this man was also with him, but he denied him, saying, woman, I do not know him. Amen. We already know this story, so I'm not going to read it, but the story goes on to say that not only did he deny Christ one, he denied him three times. Now, where I say that this is a bit different from David is Peter was actually foretold what he was going to do. So it's like you going to start a business or you going to start anything that you want to do. And someone tells you the way you are going, you are going to fail. Or you are going to do the wrong thing or this is what is going to happen. But with Peter, he still went ahead and did exactly what was said. Amen? He didn't learn from it or he didn't, maybe he did not understand it. But the point is, he went ahead and did exactly what was said to him. This is a man that was right next to Jesus. This is a man that Jesus himself had handpicked to be the head 
of the apostles. Amen? He is the head of the apostles. He is the man that Jesus Christ said to him, son of Simon, it is God who has revealed this to you. So with this man as a Christian, he had the spirit of God in, in him. He sees things, but yet he still failed. Amen? A lot of us, we walk with God and we think because we walk with God or because we are a Christian, we will never fail. Amen? It don't matter if you are the king. It don't matter if you stood next to Christ. Failure is something that every one of us will go through. Whatever we do, one way or the other, we will fail as something. But what I'm here to tell you today is failing is not the end. Amen? Failing is not the end. There's one more story that I want us to look up before we start diving into it. Most of the time, we all call it the prodigal son. But in the Bible, it's actually called the lost son. Amen? The lost son. And that is in Luke 15 from verse 11. Luke 15 from verse 11. Again, we know this story. We all know the story. Even the young ones, the little ones, they know the story. But I want us to have an imagination for a second. Here is a young man sees that his father is rich. Back then in the Old Testament or in the olden times, when a man has two sons or a man has children, the firstborn always get double portion. Amen? And then the second one gets single portion. So this is a young man who was work, working with his dad. And all of a sudden, something happened that he decided, you know what? I want to go on my own and do my own thing. I want to go and set up my own business. I want to have my own life. And so he went to the father and said to him, can I have my inheritance now? Amen? Can I have Whatever you have for me, I want to leave. Can I have it now? The, the youth are now saying, they, they've got this word in their mouth. They're saying the audacity. This guy had the audacity to go to the father and said, I know you're not dead, but I want my inheritance. I want to leave. If you want to leave, go. But he had that audacity <laughs> to say to the dad, give me my inheritance. Those olden days, it was, like, it was like Africa. The father should have slapped him. But he didn't for some reason. Amen? For some reason, he did not slap him. And according to the story, the dad gave it to him. Amen? He gave his inheritance to him. And from what we are looking at, this dad was not a poor guy. He was a rich man. So we are talking about a lot of money. Gave it to this guy, and he went. The story then says from verse 13. And many days after, the young son gathered all, the young son gathered all together, journeyed to a, a far country, and there wasted his possessions. Wow. He took the money that he had, and the Bible said he went and wasted the money. With prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a several farmer farming in that land, and he began to be in want. Right there is the failure. He spent everything that he has, he wasted it. Amen? He wasted it and failed at what he had planned to go and do. Amen? 
All these three stories are in the Bible to teach us something. This morning, I want to share with you guys that in life, or life is up and down. Amen? Life is up and down. We win some, you lose some. You succeed at some, you fail at some. But most of the time, we don't look at what we have succeed. Most of the time, it's the things that we have failed at that comes back to haunt us, that drag us down. How many of you in this room can say to yourself that you haven't failed at anything before? That everything you have done from the day you could speak has been the right thing. We will come back and answer that. Amen. Praise the Lord. But as Christians, we have something that is fantastic. As Christians, we have God. Who is the creator of all things. The beginning and the end. Everything that we see, God created it. He created me and you. And he says in 2 Timothy, For God gave us spirit, not of fear, but power and love and self-control. Beloved, don't let your failure pull you down. Don't let your failure scare you. Don't let your failure become a fear to control you. But rather, you control that failure. Like I said from the beginning, we never, for me, I I will never fail until the day I die. That is when I have truly failed. That is when, if I have said I would do something that I was not able to do and die, that is when I have failed. But as long as I have life, as long as God is still my God, I have not failed. Amen? As long as God is still your God, as long as Jesus is still on the throne, you have not failed. If we go back to the first story of David, In the next chapter, chapter 12, Nathan, the prophet, came to David and spoke to David. Let's go and read it, please. 2 Samuel chapter 12. So Nathan came to David and said to David, And said to him, there were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little lamb, which he had bought and nourished. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and laid in his own bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. Amen. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare for the wayfaring man or wayfaring man who had come to him. But he looked, but he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Amen. So the Bible says, David then got angry and said that this person needs to be killed. This person needs to be destroyed. Bring them to me. But verse 7, Nathan said to David, you are that man. That says the Lord of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave your master's house and your master's wife into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had, not, if that had been too little, I, I also would have given you much more. 
Amen. God says if it's little, he will give us much more. Praise the Lord. Why have you desire or why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? I want us to jump to you. Verse 15, then Nathan departed to his house, to his house, and the Lord strike the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went and prayed all night on the ground. Amen. David fasted all night. When David realized that, realized that he had done wrong, he went to God and he fasted and prayed. Amen? He fasted and prayed. And the Bible says that God did what David wanted God to do. Amen? Beloved, we will make mistakes in our life. But like I said, as long as God is there, he can restore us. Amen? As long as God is there, he will restore you if you go to him. David failed. When he realized that he had failed, he went to God and God restored him. He went to God and God delivered him. That is the kind of God we serve. So as long as God is still on the throne... I have not failed. Amen? The story of the lost son. When we go back to that, again, let's go back to Luke 22, Luke 15, 11 to 32. Luke 15, 11 to 32. Let me start from 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And in, the, and in your sight, And I am I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Praise the Lord. But the father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let, let us eat and be merry. Amen. God is always waiting for us to learn from our mistakes and to come back to him. And when we come back to God, he will restore us. Amen? The first two stories. One of the things, or the way I have titled this message, is that there is strength in my failure. Amen? There is strength in your failure. The saying, or we have a saying that says, what don't kill you, make you stronger or make you better, whichever way you want to put it. Amen? When you look at these two stories, especially the second one, this young man learned from his mistakes. Amen? He learned from his failure. And because he had learned from his failure, it caused him to go back to his father. And I guarantee you that this young man will never do this thing again. So let me ask you a question. Reading these two stories, would you say that the young man is a failure or he has succeeded in life? Amen. You see, when we fail at something, as a child of God, 
or as this year has come and is about to end, the things that you put down to do, the things that you think you have failed, as a child of God, your number one first thing is to pray to God and ask God to open your eyes. Amen? Ask God to open your eyes and say to yourself, I am going to sit down and analyze. I've said to Pastor once before that a lot of us Christians, we don't like to analyze things. We don't like to look at the things that we are doing. We don't like to look at our life and say, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? Most of the time, we just get up and we go, 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 go. But beloved, we need to sit down and analyze. We need to sit down and look at things in our life. Amen? You see, a person that don't analyze, don't know when they have done something wrong. Amen? Because all the time, you are just going. You don't look back. You don't look side. You don't even think about what you are doing. You are just going. Going, going, going. But if we take time to look at the things that are going, if we take time to analyze things, because this young man, the lost son, the Bible says that in verse... In verse 8... No, not verse 8. Verse 15, I believe. No, verse 17. It says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. What, would he, what was he doing? Reflecting. He was analyzing what his life has become. He was thinking about the things that was going on. And he realized that he had made a mistake. And because he was analyzing, God opened his eyes. And he was able to see, ah, I've been foolish. For even in my father's house, the servants have enough bread to eat and even to spare. Amen? One of the things that has become a, a, a sickness or a, a disease among Christians is reflecting. Amen? And because we don't sit down and reflect, the enemy is always using the things that we plan to do but have not succeed against us. He's always calling you a failure. He's always calling you a failure. Some of us, we can't even move forward because of the things we are calling failure in our lives. Some of you are scared to do certain things because you think you have failed at one thing. Amen? Some of you, next year is coming. And because of the things that you are thinking you failed at this year, it's limiting you from what you are going to do next year. Amen? It's limiting us. You plan to study something this year. You went to college and they say, ah, because you haven't been to school for a long time, we want you to go and do math and get level three. And straight away, I don't like math. Level three, which one is that? I I can't do this. And you stop there. And then you've labeled yourself. I have failed. But yet God has a business for you to do next year. 
But because you are limiting yourself, you are not able to move forward. Beloved, this morning, I want to tell you, I have not failed, and neither have you failed. Amen? I have not failed, and neither have you failed. As long as we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have not failed. I think you all know the story. You've heard the story of um, KFC, the guy that did KFC. And he did not start KFC until his late 60s or 70s. Everything that he tried in life, he failed at it. But he never gave up. He kept on trying and trying and trying until he made a breakthrough. One of my favorite mentors, or well, who's now passed away, Steve Job. This man, at the early age of 24, with a friend, created something amazing. Yet by the time he was 30, he had lost everything that he had to start again. He started again and worked and worked and worked till Apple went back and bought the second company that he created. The first company he created got rid of him, created the second company. Then the first company he created came back and bought the second company he created. Now we call him one of the most successful businessmen of our time. But yet he failed, lost everything. He didn't give up and became something. I mentioned these two people. Because from as far as I know, these two people were not God-fearing people. But they succeeded. Imagine you, a child of God. Why are we Christians allowing fear to control us? Why? Why are we allowing fear to control us? Do you know when fear gets hold of you, To me, if I understand it right, if I allow fear to control me, it's like I don't have faith in God anymore. Because if I had faith in God, I would not allow fear to control me. Amen? There are so many people in the Bible that at the beginning, things did not go right for. Moses was one of them. Amen? Moses was one. King David was one. Peter was one. Even Paul was one. But what is the difference between them and us now? Did God say, well, they have failed, but I'm still going to, you know, forget, let, let them forget their failure. I'm just going to bless them. No, I think they had to make a decision somewhere. My question for you is, as we are going, as the year is coming to an end, what decisions are you making? What things are you thinking about? What is going on in your heart? What plans have you got for the future? What are you allowing the enemy to whisper in your ear? Amen? What are you allowing the enemy to whisper in your ear? My last story goes right back. See, God is such an amazing God that he don't want us to become this robot people that we just praise and praise and just that's all we do. The Bible, I've always said that it is a manual to show us the things past and things to come. It is the only thing that can go round and round and round in life. Solomon, Solomon once said that there's nothing new under the sun. 
everything is going round and round. But as a child of God, you have your Bible, which shows you where your brothers before you went wrong and how they got straightened them to come back on the right path. Right from the beginning, Genesis, what happened? Right from the beginning. Adam and Eve failed. Right from the beginning. Genesis chapter 3. They failed. They, the, our mother and father was given a garden. And that's all they had. They, they didn't even have bills to pay. They didn't have anything. But yet, they failed. All they had to do. Amen. All they had to do was to see to the garden. Not even to... The way farmers do now is you look after your farm, you reap your cr crops and go and sell it to get something back. They did not. It was for them. Look after it, eat what you, you get from it. And they fail. And when God came to the garden, what did they say? Oh, we heard your voice, so we hate ourselves. But this is the amazing thing. Right there in Genesis chapter 3, God restored everything. Isn't that right? How did God restore it? A question. Since you all said amen. How did God restore them? Pardon? Kick them out. No. Quickly. How? Sorry? He promised them a son right there. Amen? Right there, God promised them a son after he told them everything that was going to happen. He says, because of your sins, you are going to suffer. You are going to do this. You are going to do that. But nevertheless, your seed or the serpent will bruise the heel, but your seed will step on his head. Right there. They failed, and God restored them. Beloved, you have not failed. You have not failed. All you need to do is to turn back to God, and God is waiting to restore you today. Amen? God is waiting to restore every single one of us. From today going, I'm telling you, I'm no longer a failure because that's one of the things that has haunted me in my life. Believing certain things that I am not able to do to be the things that drag me down. But beloved, I stand here to this morning in front of some amazing people that I can see here. And I say to you, I am not a failure. Amen. As long as God is with me, I am restored. Praise the Lord. God is waiting to restore us. As we are getting ready to go into 2020, um, 2020 don't let yesterday's things hold you down. What I'm going to do, I'm going to look back at them. I was not able to finish this. Where did I go wrong? Father, Give me wisdom. It's a little into next year. Can I say, Pastor? The title or the theme for next year is the year of our wisdom or the year of wisdom. And beloved, I am going to do my 99.99%. You see, I leave that point, point zero zero one because... Anything can happen. But I'm going to do my 99.99% to make sure that next year I soak every word that God has for JCC. Because when Solomon became king, he said, Lord, who can lead your people unless you give him wisdom? <laughs> next year is the year of wisdom. I want you to analyze yourself. If you are 40 
for the past 35 years from five going, I want you to go back and I want you to analyze yourself. Every word that has been said that you have failed at it, tell them, I am alive. I am not dead. I have breath in me and Jesus is still my Lord, so I have not failed. I am going to succeed. Because next year, the year of wisdom is going to change us. Amen? Next year, I am going to be a new person. Our God reigns. He is not dead. So that's my story this morning. The Joy Christian Center, we have not failed. While God is still on the throne, and Jesus has not returned or called me home, that I still have breath to change even what just happened half an hour ago, I have not failed. Shall we be on our feet? I want us to pray. I think that's one of the things that we don't do often on Sundays when we come to church. After the message, we share the grace and we go. Sometimes by the time you even walk out the door, you have forgotten the message. This morning, I want us to pray and ask that God will shape us. Amen? That God will come and restore us. I don't know what you have been